Hey, I'm Decaf Long Gamer. Welcome back to FM24 Youth Factory. This is episode 15, following our championship and promotion to the National League. Just a couple of days later, we have confirmation of our stadium and building will commence. So this is fantastic news, something we've been waiting for. It is going to take a few years to complete, and we might find ourselves up multiple divisions by that point, but it, with a capacity of 15,000, we're at least secure to the championship and maybe beyond. I have to see what the uh, minimum standards are. In fact, I'm really curious now that we do have the official stadium deal in, in place. So we'll check on that shortly. Uh, something else we need to check on too, though, is the finances. So here's what's up with that one. The cost is 22 million or 21.8 million uh, for the stadium. We are getting a stadium sponsorship deal worth half a million 450k that's that's nice that's that's a decent amount of cash uh we've also been granted 9.75 million from the authorities and i think well i not think um, i'm confident that was the element we were waiting on we had our end of the finances but that additional nearly 10 million coming from the city of senin city of senin not a it's not a city folks uh i'm not even sure it's considered a township the latest census on on senin england on the southwest coast like land's end this is the western tip the edge 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 of cornwall i i did that on purpose when i selected this city less than a thousand people barely but we can round it off <laughs> It's a thousand people. <laughs> We're going to have a capacity of 15K. F more than 15 times. In fact, like I said, we rounded it off. This is 16 times the population of Senin. And, and there is no large township mm, terribly close. As you get a little further away, there, there certainly are options. But on that extent of that peninsula... <laughs> It is not a large population base, so we we can pretty much house within our stadium that entire edge of, of Cornwall, which is badass that we are becoming that team. We're becoming the big dogs in the area. We're not quite there in terms of passing every, everybody up, but at least on the tip of Cornwall, we are now that team. I've got to wait for the uh, finances to update so we could see uh, that money put in. But in the first uh, playoff round, Dover has beaten Maidenhead on the road 2-1. Going forward today, the finances have ticked over. We have paid in full our portion of the cost for the stadium build, even though it's going to take three years. It's already paid for. We are now at $9.5 so we still have money. But here's the important thing, even though we still have money, balancing the books is incredibly important. I've talked about this in a little bit of detail in the past, but it was probably back when we were on the FM23. So let me give you a brief rundown on how finances of this nature work. Now, I, I own a small business and I do my own finances, so I've learned over time how to to do this and, and what the keys are i'm not an expert but let me give you a basic rundown of what we are dealing with if you are at a deficit for a year you're in the red you're not going to pay taxes or you're going to pay very little it depends on the structure uh, of the the taxes that you're dealing with right what what the tax code is nation by nation state by state things are varied to an extent okay but if you're in the red you're not going to pay taxes here's the thing if you're in the red a little versus in the red a lot you're not going to pay taxes period if you're in the black if you're making profit the further in the black you are the higher the worse your taxes are going to be long term every company wants to make money Everyone's trying to turn a profit. Sustainability is all dependent on that. But the greater your profit, the higher your taxes. 
and then that takes away from the profit and makes you ultimately less profitable. I, I think everybody should be tracking with me so far. I said this is going to be brief, so let me get to the point. You want to avoid, in a given period, a greater sum of black level profit. If you can minimize that and just be a little bit profitable period by period, then you're not paying much in taxes. That's the goal. That's the goal of most businesses. Now, one of, I don't think this happens in every single country, but I know it happens in more than just the U.S. But this is where certain things come into consideration for a lot of companies. And you'll see this. You'll see expansion projects, expenses. Now, amateur, gosh, that word's hard to say, amortization, like, splitting up costs over long term is something that can happen that's a deeper finance thing than my small small business gets into but let's go on the surface here okay just keeping it simplified if you offset huge profits by adding in projects by adding in expenses that ultimately create growth for you to make more profit like adding or, or building a second location or a third location or a eighth location eighth location is a great example you have seven locations and across your seven locations you're making say six million in profit if you spend five million of that profit on a project towards building towards the a further expansion adding that seventh location and you spend just the right amount to make that project take a little while but keep you just in the profitable range where you're able to take your yearly sum you're making money and you're cutting your taxes way way down because you're not making this huge sum of profit you're just making profit what you do for yourself is you, you, you make those taxes dwindle and disappear and ultimately create more profit down the road. But that project, well, let's say it takes 10 million to finish. You spend 5 million of that on this year. You don't have that 10 million sitting away, or maybe you do, but either way, you put all those expenses in right away. You go into the big red and pay for that. Well, what happens when it's done? And all of a sudden you're turning greater profit and where does that money go right you're gonna end up paying it in taxes so you you keep yourself just a little bit in the black year by year and you commit funds when you're too far in the black towards growth towards expansion and you just keep yourself a little bit in the black and the the revenue stream just grows and grows and grows as projects finish and you move on to the next project and you just keep yourself steady in that and that's how you get it. That, that's how you dodge taxes legally. <laughs> right now, we have put ourselves heavily into the red, but not so heavily, actually. Uh, looking at last season, we were seven and a half million profit because we held on to the money because of the stadium. It took a full extra year, a full year for them to finalize the deal. But I was hanging on to that money. We paid a lot in taxes over the last year. Now, I immediately pumped in a little more money at the start of the year going, yeah, stadium, 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 stadium. We need that stadium. So we're in the red, not by a ton, but we're in the red by 2.7 million. If we can bring in roughly two and a half to three million, if any of our deals will cash out with that, then we don't have to worry about paying taxes on those deals. Just need that small amount of revenue. So we're gonna look keep ourselves just a little bit in the black long term you, you sit on future profit for too long and it all comes flooding in at once you end up paying a ton in taxes so we're going to try to avoid that here and see if any of our outstanding clauses will cash in because we have five that we could cash in on and there's a $2.42 million cash-in option from Reading for Sam Brooks. That's pretty damn close 
to where we want to be. So we might want to cash in on that, but let's do the math on all of these because I'd rather be closer to the 3 million mark if possible. Ugh. Oh, I hate that one. Bercielli. We're, we're, we're not letting anyone go for pennies anymore <laughs> at all. Uh, Penries, 200K combined with 2.4 million could be putting us right on that that verge of being profitable for the year. Quintafera, see, there, there's one you don't want to cash in on at this point. That would put us 5 million in the black, and that would make our taxes for the coming year pretty dang expensive. He's got some value. Schmizek, 200K. Okay, so Sam Brooks, that's the obvious one that gets us close. We're going to go ahead and sell that clause. And that brings us to a near profit for the year. Let's go ahead and push forward and see how that translates. Wheelstone beating uh, Real Bedford 1-0 on the road. So that sets up a semifinal of Gloucester and Wheelstone Bromley against Dover. With that payout, we're back up to 12 million, and our losses for the year is down to 358,000. Now we we have no big sum of money that's about to come in, as far as I know. I mean, any payout for the league or anything like that, we're not getting that down at this level. So we should be pretty well set to cash in on maybe 400k more. The tiniest profit's not going to hurt us tax-wise, uh, and we do have a couple of deals that we could cash in on still. So Herbie Penrace, 204K from Forest Green. Or do we sit and wait and hope that he's going to be worth more down the road? Uh, Penrace now 22, looking really good. I feel like he could sell for more than he is, is at. And I think it's worth it to sit on it and hope that his value goes up. And honestly, same on Schmizek. Both of these are solid players that their value should go up and and not come down schmizek 23 check defender for swindon he's he's worth one and a half million they, they could easily end up selling him for two or three million if his value continues to rise or four million five million you know if they sell him for five million we're getting 50 percent of the profit he was only signed for 12k we'd be getting two and a half million out of that uh, i think it's worth it to not cash in on these right now and hope that his value increases that 400k is not going to make a big difference for us but what we have managed to do is we've just about pushed ourselves to even for the year and therefore we are not wasting the tax burden down the road i think that's good business now the other thing also while we're on the subject here of finances and good business uh, we are back up to 12 million for a balance it's healthy it's not amazing but it's certainly healthy one thing that i would like to do but we just hit the stadium what, two days ago because of that i'm gonna hold off a little bit till later in the summer uh, but i have every intention of in a month or two getting back on one subject that we have not uh, been able to make any progress on now for two years and that is our training facilities which sit at average and have plenty of room for growth and i think 12 million is going to be enough to cover uh, the next upgrade to get us to a full three stars but i doubt that the board's going to approve it at this moment i think we've got to push forward a little bit in our timeline but if i ask them at the tail end of summer maybe fingers crossed that they'll approve that so we can get those training facilities up to that third star and still have good finances uh, that are seen as secure for now uh, we still have not pushed out that reputation any further though it is not obscure it's local uh, and we are at the one star but we're not at that one and one and a half star mark just yet uh, but the promotion uh, you get part of the reputation boost the moment you promote but some of your uh, reputation boost comes as it cycles into the new year and it actually recognizes you as being in another division uh, so hopefully hopefully with that boost we can uh, push ourselves up to another level having gone straight to the premier league rules uh, right here at the bottom ground requirements minimum stadium capacity is 5k minimum seated is 5k 
our 15k stadium will easily cover that and yes that means when this stadium is done which is going to take three years but when it is done we're not going to reach premier league in that time frame uh, that's that puts us over that mark now going down right nobody else is going to have anything bigger than that but right now we have 15 uh, 100 for the next three years so it is going to be a little while before we see ourselves reach that level uh, minimum seated is 2k for skybet league one league two also the 5k mark so to get to league two we have to have a, a larger stadium so if we do immediately promote again uh, we're going to be loaning a different stadium uh, come the following season for the national league oh buddy okay well we're going to be in a different stadium next year minimum stadium capacity is 4k for the national league the stadium we're going to be in does not have that does it let me double check what we've been in it was 1500 right no it's not 1500 that was the one the year before bickland park though 3500 so it is not covering uh, we are going to have to move to another stadium yet again third year in a row into another stadium and depending on the stadium we move into at 4k might not hold us over for the three years if we see another promotion uh, within that time frame so uh, falmouth town and their 3500 stadium has been our home for just a single year we're going to be heading somewhere else yet again dover with their second straight um, upset will play in the final for the promotion playoffs to be the second team to go up with us potentially but gloucester has come away victorious the favorite 3-1 however looking a little closer at that game it was anything but decided it was 1-1 in the closing stretches closing stretch of the match until a penalty in the 76th minute put them on top and then a stoppage time goal to seal it when wheelstone was kind of having to throw everything at them uh put the game away but really it was a lot closer and the penalty being the decisive moment wow that is a absolute shocker but dover continues the upset streak from seventh place in the league they promote gloucester is going to have to stick around the national league south another season they got one back late in the 88th minute but they were held scoreless all the way up till the final stretch actually both teams are held scoreless all the way to the final stretch 74th and 76th minute goals for dover so gloucester stalemate lasts all the way till the end and then gloucester absolutely falls apart gives up two goals back to back moments apart from each other and then wake up and get things going but it's too late at that point and dover the surprise of the season is promoting to the national league alongside us and for me that's great news because gloucester's tough dover's a much more beatable team heading into the next season i highly expect that dover will only improve by so much and gloucester would have been a difficult foe in the national league so that makes life a, a bit easier on us as we're looking at a mid-table foe versus a top end foe and that takes us to our end of season review our average attendance this season was 1459 it's not a lot it's going to take us a, a lot more reputation to really grow that and i think that's going to be one of the harder things going forward it's going to keep the finances a bit more tricky as we go up we're not really collecting more from our, our player sales because it's really about that championship or premier league level i think the only difference is i can hold out easier against a league two or a league one side trying to to sweep our players out from underneath us uh, it becomes a bit easier there and so we don't have to settle for bad deals but outside of that you know it's still going to come down to the money from the future deals the cashing in those clauses either you know automatically from our end or them happening because the deals actually go through that's still the best way to make money for us and will continue to be so long term but as we climb the divisions our salary goes up our expenses go up 
and we're not necessarily bringing in a ton of extra cash. We started with a thousand seater and a thousand fans. We've really only grown that by not quite 50% in a lot of years from the 11th tier all the way up to, uh, well, heading to the fifth tier now, uh, through what seven seasons eight seasons that we're in i think we're going to be entering our eighth season through so through seven years we've added 50 percent to our fan total that's a lot you add another 50 percent over the next seven years and we're looking at 2250 uh, that, that's not much <laughs> that is not much that's not going to bring in a, a a lot of money um but, but the, there's also there comes a time where the level that you're playing at just draws a bigger crowd and things go up exponentially, not just um, rather gradually as we've been in these lower levels where there just isn't much of a reputation. There isn't as much of a fan base, period, regardless of the team. So I don't worry about that as much as I might need to worry about that biggest win of the year was 8-2 biggest match of the year was the 4-2 win over Wealdstone who nearly promoted and the goal of the season Lanahan Penrice on the 40th truly memorable goal from Youth Factory forward Penrice as he hits an effort from 21 yards which curled past the goalkeeper our competition prize money was 80k overall finances Kind of came out level from the year before. Of course, we were in the same level for two years here. It's encouraging that we did manage to win the league because, for the most part, we were not dominant like we had been in the previous years where we won and climbed easily. There was a struggle. I've had struggles with the fullbacks with this formation. The fullbacks have been amazing, and McFadden and Redknapp have been those fullbacks for years, and this is typical. Regardless of level, they've been right about just a shade below 7.0. So Redknapp even reaching exactly 7 is a good year for them. Normally the center backs have been much better, Kitching in particular. A 6.99 obviously is not that bad. But he underperformed pretty much all year because he spent all year pissed off that we didn't sell him to others. Technically he has an expiring contract, but the minimum security will keep him around. We'll add, we'll tack one year onto that deal before uh, before it runs out. But the anchors didn't do much. Our defensive mids, you know, they were okay. Thornhill didn't have a great season. He was okay. Lanahan Penrys definitely, uh, and Atticun Lane Davidson led the way for us. Uh, if not for them, it could have been a struggle. I mean, even Sam Julian didn't even manage to get a 7.0 uh, in his first year. And just the 36 appearances, fortunately, all those injuries that he took, none of them kept him out terribly long as he was able to rebound from those relatively quickly. He even managed to get an assist this year. Redknapp had eight. Uh, That's nice. McFadden had 14. You would think the ratings would be better with those kind of numbers, but uh, they are what they are. Hassel and Kitching each getting on the scoreboard at least a handful of times. Uh, Mortland, Atkins... Those defensive mids, they have a specific role. They have good ratings, and yet they didn't put up huge numbers. Uh, but you'll take you'll take 14 goals out of your defensive mids um, any time. And, you know, there might have been more, too. I know at least, I think Primus had at least one or two. But Atacunle, 19 and 15. Uh, Lanahan Penrys had... So Atacunle, heavy on the assist side, okay on the goal side. Thornhill didn't put up big numbers 20 combined though still not a bad season so he was okay for us and didn't play all the time he he missed some time as well so that's another thing to keep in mind uh, of the attacking players he was the one who missed the most time in fact of all the starters outside of julian he was the one who missed the most time lanahan penry's was huge though 11 assists 33 goals as a winger where davidson only put up a single goal more and was only two assists behind while playing on top in that prime position to be putting the most balls in the back of the net. Uh, Lanahan Penrice was huge for us. Big thing going forward into this season is how many of these guys can we hang on to? If we lose one to two, we should be able to retool pretty quickly 
and have a successful year. If we lose more than two, we're in trouble. But we could try to get the loan back anyway to hang on to these guys for the year, and therefore I think we should be in for a good season. But we've already seen that an upset Dan Kitching throughout the year made him underperform. If there's interest for most of the first 11, and we avoid that, we could end up with half the team upset and could make it for a tougher year. So we're not automatic to be having a successful season ahead of us. Um, this offseason is going to be a big thing to watch, which I'm going to navigate off camera. We've had a lot already. I didn't expect to be doing more than a few minutes through this, but that stadium, that was a big deal. Uh, it's going to really change things in the long term of this playthrough. But as for the summer, obviously I'm not making deals. I'm mostly going to just be trying to hang on to these guys. So if I can, uh, we're going to be pushing straight into the start of the next season. I have a feeling, though, there's going to be news regarding player transfers uh, and, and big offers coming in for somebody like Atlanta Lanahan Penrys, who had a big season and is probably going to get a lot of attention, or a Paul Davidson, who scored 34 goals as a young, what, like 19, 18-year-old player? Like, that that could get him a lot of attention. So um, Atacunle, Atkins, Moreland, Hassel, Kitching already, Julian, I mean, there's a lot of guys there getting attention. Redknapp, McFadden have not been quite as bad with that because they've been in the role for a number of years. They're not that young anymore. They're, they're two of our oldest players, or if not the two oldest players that we have. Them sticking around is a little easier, but even they got attention last year, so it could be just about the entirety of the first 11 that are going to look at bigger clubs from higher divisions and want to go. I mean, yay, we got promoted. Yay, we won the league. It's still only the National League that we're headed to. to. So a League 2, League 1 championship side comes along and starts offering for their services, and they catch wind of it. It's natural. It's natural that a 19, 20 year old's going to want to jump three divisions, four divisions, and not just stick it out with the project going, hey, come on, we've climbed this many tiers in this many years. They want to climb that many tiers instantly. <laughs> I get it. I get it. It makes sense. I'm still encouraged, though. This has been good. This has been very good. Uh, as for those accolades, what did happen? Um, two last things here, real fast. Uh, First 11, three guys added to that. Mortland, Hassel, and Atacunle. Mortland straight into the best 11. Uh, while Hassel and Atacunle join the bench. And none of our first 11 are current attackers. Uh, but both of our defensive mids are McFadden and Redknapp. Of course are. They've been in those positions so long. And Kitching, the only other one. Uh, Sam Julian has not yet made it onto the list of best goalkeepers. He's only had one season at, at the helm, Bercielli and Penrys are the current goalkeepers in that uh, position. I think it's going to take at least one more, probably two more seasons for Sam Julian to even break into that. And it's weird that we've already been this far into the playthrough uh, long enough to establish a, a strong first 11, and it could take quite a while. I mean, uh, like Lanahan Penrys just managed to win the National League South Player of the Season Award. So uh, he is the guy, and he has won the award. Uh, he actually also managed to get the uh, Golden Boot, top goal scorer, 32 league goals. He was one goal behind Davidson overall, but Davidson had 30 league goals. Uh, so that was the difference there. Mario Bacon was third for Dover. Head coach of the season, uh, we're not on the list of favorites, no surprise, but have we even made the list? No, we haven't even made the short list, so uh, we didn't manage enough games. I, th I think we managed probably 35, maybe 30 out of the the 46 league games. That wasn't enough, so uh, we're not even a choice. Uh, you would think that the Dover won, but I'm going to go with the Gloucester, Richard Taylor. They were better. They were tougher. They didn't promote. He deserves it. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.